Hi everyone and welcome to Medical Terminology HITT 1305 for Summer 2 at Blinn College. My name is Jamie Schrader and I'll be your instructor. So this recording is going to be an overview of just the Medical Terminology course and I do have another recording um, going over eCampus as a generic orientation as well. So again this recording is just going to go over the course specifically. So let's get started with the syllabus. I'm clicking right here on Concourse Syllabus and the syllabus will open up in a new window. Just give it a second. So meeting times. Again, we will never meet face to face. You never have to come to campus if you do not want to. But you can access this course any day of the week and any time of the day as long as you have internet access. I highly recommend you logging in and working on the course a little bit every day, even on weekends. We move very, very quickly in a summer course and your worst enemy is going to be procrastination. Do not put it off until tomorrow because believe me, something's going to happen tomorrow and you won't be able to get your work done. So again, try to work on this class every single day, even on the weekends. It's best to do a little bit every day than try to cram it all in one day, believe me. Contact information. Again, my name is Jamie Schrader. I am the director of the Health Information Technology Program here at Blinn. My email is jamie.schrader at blend.edu, and of course you can always email me with an eCampus as well. Now, my office is in Brenham, but during the summer I am not on campus. I am totally remote, so do not come to my office. Just call me or email me, and I'm sure we can figure out the issue um, very quickly. Here is my phone number. Again, I do check my voicemail every day, um, actually multiple times. Um, a day once the summer session begins. So again, if you have questions, please do not hesitate to email me or call me. I will respond very, very quickly. And again, office hours are by appointment only during the summer. But again, if you have a question, just email me. It's so much quicker than trying to um, set up an appointment because like I said, I'm, I can pretty much fix anything via, the, um, via email or even a phone call if necessary. The description of the course. This is a study of medical terms through word, origin, and structure, introduction to abbreviations and symbols, surgical and diagnostic procedures, and medical specialties. There are no pre or co recs for this course. Now, if you are an HITT major, which you would know if you are, um, you must make a grade of 70% or better to complete the course. This is not a core curriculum course. The outcome. So at the end of this quick semester, you will be able to identify, pronounce, and spell medical terms. Use terms in context. Utilize prefixes, suffixes, word roots, I'm sorry, root words and plurals to construct medical terms, analyze medical terms, translate abbreviations, and interpret symbols. You only need one book. It is Exploring Medical Language by LaFleur Brooks. It's in its 10th edition, and no online publisher resources are needed. All you need is the book, and that's it. Of course, you do need internet access. You do need computer speakers or a headset because I record my lectures so that way you can listen to my lectures. And then also a webcam microphone because you will be presenting your project. You'll be recording your project with a webcam. So you do need a webcam with a microphone for that as well. I'll have more information about that later on though. Course requirements, achievement of all learning outcomes, completion of assignments, major exams, final project, and of course, just participation in online discussions and activities. My grading evaluation is pretty basic. Everything, all assignments are worth a point value. So at the end of the semester, eCampus will add up your points, and if you have 900 to 1,000 points, it's an A, 800 to 899 is a B, and so forth. So pretty basic there. And here's a breakdown of the course. So discussions are worth 2% of your grade. Major exams are worth 37.5% of your grade and so forth. All right, Blinn policies. All of these are links. So if you want to access those, you can. But again, there, um, this just goes into more information about the attendance policy, which I'll talk about my attendance policy in a little bit. But if you need to add drop, um, if you have a disability, there's a link for that. Um, final grade appeal, uh, alternative retailers like for books, campus carry, all of that, you can access it by just clicking that link right there. But I want to talk about my course policies. 
So two major exams will be proctored. Exams two and three will be proctored, meaning closed textbook and proctored, meaning someone is watching you, okay? So taking an exam without a proctor will result in a grade of zero. Now we have several options for proctoring. One option is coming to one of the blend campuses to the testing centers and going there and having the testing center proctor you, meaning they will access the exam for you. You'll take the exam there in their room to make sure you're not accessing any um, websites or your book, things like that. Another option is by using Tegrity. Tegrity is a software that records your desktop and also your surroundings using a webcam and I have more information about this as well. Both of these options are free so please take advantage of them again if you're 30 minutes away from a campus and you don't feel like driving to a campus then you can take it via Tegrity and again I have more information um, later on about that. If you are in the military please let me know that first thing okay but if you are in the military and you're in a remote location I can get with your commanding officer to arrange to proctor the exam there. Now, if for some reason you just want to pay to have someone proctor your exam for you, there are some options, but I'm hoping everyone will just take advantage of the free options for proctoring. But if you feel like you need to pay to have a proctor, please let me know. So here's just a little bit more information about Tegrity and the testing centers. All right, the attendance policy. At Blinn, we are required to take attendance on all students. So if you miss one week's worth of assignments, you'll be given one absence. When you miss two weeks worth of assignments, you'll be given two absences and drop from the course. So for the summer semester, one week is the equivalent of three days. So if you miss three days of assignments, you get one absence. Once you miss three more days, of assignments then you'll be dropped from the course because this class moves so fast you have to stay on top of your work okay completing late work does not make up for current assignments and students will be will still be counted absent if current work is not submitted so I do have a late work policy which I'll talk about in a second but again you have to submit current work for you to be counted present so there are only four excused absences for blend religious holidays, representing Blinn, if you're dual credit, which won't apply in the summertime, and military service. So I'm not heartless, but again, sickness, death of a family member or friend, work issues, failed technology, loss of electricity, none of those are excused absences. I give you plenty of time to get your work done. Like I said, don't procrastinate because it's going to hurt you in the long run, okay? I am not heartless. I've been in your shoes before, but I, since I do have a late work policy, that's why I don't want to have to decide if John Doe's excuse is better than Jill Doe's excuse for why they missed something. So I just don't worry about excuses. I have a late work policy and I just go by that, okay? So my late work policy. Everything is due according to the schedule, which we'll talk about in a second. So for the summer, Late assignments will be deducted 10% for one day late, 20% for two days late, 30% for three days late, and then after that it's a zero. So I'm giving you three extra days to turn something in, but it's going to be percentages off depending on which day you submit it. And all of my assignments are always due by 10, I'm sorry, they're always due by 11.30 at night, Central Standard Time. If you are not in Central Standard Time, make sure you figure out what the correct time is then where you were at. There is no late work accepted for discussions, for the project, or for the final exam. Okay, so remember, discussions, project, final exam, there is no late work accepted. Again, a broken computer or internet connection is not an acceptable excuse for missing or late assignments. It is your responsibility to have a backup location to use if you're internet or computer fails. Okay, so again, I know every Starbucks, every McDonald's has internet access. Um, make sure you have, know somebody else who has a computer if yours fails for some reason. Now, if Blinn has a technical issue, then I will extend the due date, but I must get an email from Blinn in order for this to apply. Academic integrity or cheating policy. We do not tolerate cheating. You're in this class because I'm thinking you want to go into a medical or healthcare field. 
if you don't if you don't know medical terminology, you're not going to be successful in, in, in any of your other courses. So don't cheat in this class. This is actually a pretty fun class. Um, so do yourself a favor and actually le learn the material and not cheat, okay? But if you are caught cheating, both you and the person allowing you to cheat will be penalized. You will both get a zero for that assignment. And depending on the assignment, you could actually fail the course. So do not cheat. So again, minor assignments may be discussed together as a group, but your submission must be individualized. No group work on major exams or projects. Answers from Quizlet. If you find answer key somehow, internet searches, they're not accepted. You have to come up with your own answers, okay? But if you take them from the book, I'm good with that, okay? And I'll talk about that in a second. And then cite your sources when applicable, mainly for your discussions and your final project, you need to cite your sources. And then also for your project, we use Turnitin, which will check for plagiarism. So once you submit it and it goes through Turnitin, if 60% or more is similar, that means you've either copied too much or you've cited with quotations too much, okay? A research paper should not just be full of quotations that you're getting from other sources. It should be your information as well. So again, 60% or more of similarity check will not be graded and you will receive a zero on that assignment as well. Again, I'll have more information about the project later on. Communication. I cannot stress enough how important communication is in an online class. I have no idea if you're having issues, if you're not understanding something, if you have your hand raised, if you have the deer in the headlight look, I don't know. You have to take the initiative and ask questions. I consider myself a very helpful person, so please do not be scared to ask questions. I am here to help you. I want you to succeed in this course. So I will communicate within the course by the news feature, discussion boards, and email. Now remember, you also have a Blend email account that you were given when you first registered with Blend. I will not use that email once the semester begins, but other departments might, such as financial aid or the registrar. Those departments will use that email address, so make sure you're checking that email address or have that email address, oh, I'm sorry, have your emails forwarded to your Yahoo or Gmail account then. And so here's a link about setting up your email, your Blend email account. This notification of initial license, this is just kind of a generic statement. It was per House Bill 1508 back in September of 2017. Basically, this just means is if you were ever convicted of a criminal act, such as a felony, and you have to get a license to practice in your field, such as a nurse or a dental hygienist, things like that, there's a very good chance that you will not be able to get that license if you do have a criminal offense. So just check with the program director that you are trying to get into if you do have a criminal past. Okay. Now here is the schedule. I do not like how it looks in this form. So I'm going to go back to eCampus. And right here, schedule only summer two. This is just a better, easier, it just looks better to me. I highly recommend you printing this out because this shows everything. It shows the day that we're going to get started, all the assignments that we're going to do, how much the points are worth for each exercise, the due date, and then the weekly online hours. And, and I apologize, that should be daily online hours for a summer class, not weekly, and I apologize for that. So you can see, day one, we're doing a lot. We're becoming familiar with eCampus. You're going to read, watch the orientation, and complete the orientation activities. And then we're jumping right into chapter one. So you can read the chapter, and there's not a lot of reading in this book, so I just put read the chapter, but again, it's not a lot of reading. But please, um, if you want to watch my recordings, please do so. So if every chapter, I have semi-short recordings over each objective. Okay, I, I try to make them bear bearable because I know no one wants to listen to me pronounce um, medical terms all day long. So every chapter, once you get into eCampus, will have about five to six recordings over each chapter. Then you can complete the chapters I'm sorry, complete the exercises within each chapter, and the answers are in Appendix A of your textbook. So again, the 
exercises are just a great way to reinforce what you're learning. And as you can see, it's worth zero points. But again, practice, practice, practice in this class is going to be to make you will make you successful. Then I have a practice quiz in eCampus. Again, it's worth zero points, but again, the more you can practice, the better. Then there is a chapter one quiz and a chapter one review, each worth five points, and then a symbol quiz, also worth five points. Then we'll start with chapter two right away. Same thing. Read the chapter, watch my recordings, complete the exercises within the textbook for just practice, another practice assignment, and then the quiz and review. And so you can see those are each worth five points. All of this is due by Monday, July the 9th, okay? If you get done with this by Friday, then start chapter three. I sh I, my plan is to always have at least three or four chapters open at a time because I know some of you will want to try to work ahead, which is perfectly fine with me. And if for some reason you're done with chapter three and you want to go to exam one, and it's not there, just let me know and I'll open it for you. Okay, I have no problem letting students work ahead. So as you can see, I've pretty much made a very detailed schedule of what we're doing every single day. Like I said, print this out. That way you can stay on top of all your assignments, okay? Again, several pages long just because it's a lot of work to do every day. Um, let me go back up here, I apologize. Like here you see the two asterisks by discussion one. So all that means is for discussions, with every major exam you'll have a discussion and you have to post twice. You'll post your initial post and then a reply. And both are due by the exam due date, okay? And again, discussions are not extended. And then again, you can always work ahead of time or submit assignments ahead of time. But remember my late work policy though, and then assignments are due by 11.30 Central Standard Time. So I'm going to close that, and then I'm going to go to content. This is where everything is found is the content tab. Now, right now, I'm in the student view, okay? And this is what you your screen will look like when you first enter content. There's not much here, okay, yet. So first of all, go to orientation, start here, and there are 13 Submodules. Please read all of these. Again, if you just click on welcome, it's right here, but if you click on welcome, it will just um, make just that one module appear. Read that, then go to orientation videos, which you've already been here because you're listening to this one right here. And then go to meet your instructor, then the syllabus. Again, the syllabus can be found in many locations. This is These, these are the same links that are on the home page. Once you complete all 13 of those, then go to orientation assignments. There are six assignments that you must complete in order for chapter one to appear. Right now, only the first orientation assignment is here, email instructor, okay? Once you email myself through eCampus and also once you click on this link right here for email instructor, you'll have to select the task one to complete this checklist item. Once you do that, then the orientation quiz will appear down here. Once you make a 100 on the orientation quiz, and you can retake it as many times as you need to, once you make a 100 on the orientation quiz, then the introduction of yourself discussion will appear down here. Once you post that, then you'll need to upload a sample schedule. I want you to be aware of your work schedule, of your family responsibilities, of your responsibilities for this class. So I want you to come up with a weekly schedule of when you're going to work on this class, okay? It doesn't have to be anything fancy. I just, basically, I really just want to make sure you know how to submit a Dropbox, okay? Once you do that, then you'll take the little proctoring information survey or quiz. It's not for a grade. Um, I just want to make, I just want to see where you plan on taking your exams two and three at, okay? Once you do that, then questions, concerns, discussion will pop up. All I want you to do is just post, I, I know where to post questions if I have any. Once you post that, then chapter one will open. As you can see, chapter one is not listed here, but it will appear once your questions, concerns 
discussion post is done. So like I said, each of these will pop up after you complete the previous one. And then after you do all six of them, then chapter one will appear. Here are appendices that are not included in your textbook. So I've added these all here. You can print them out if you want to or save them. Here's some learning resources. I created this course for summer one and now I'm teaching it summer two. Summer one was taught by somebody else and we've we found some issues that were corrected in her class and I just want to make sure everyone's understanding them for this class. When you're submitting your homework, some homework has is filled in the blank. So when a question asks for a suffix, which is going to be symbolized by just the letter S, you'll need to put a hyphen in front of the word part, such as erior, hyphen, I-O-R. When a question asks for a prefix, you'll need to put a hyphen behind the word part, such as uni, U-N-I, hyphen. When it asks for a combining form, you'll need to put a slash, such as C-A-U-D slash O. The answers are going to be exactly how the book has them. Now, in order for you to receive credit on your responses, your spelling must be accurate. That's one of our objectives in this course is spelling. So if you misspell a word, then your answer is incorrect. So please pay special attention to spelling. And then here are just some other resources that you can use. Medline Plus is a government search tool. It has videos, articles, research tools about all different types of diseases and procedures. Here's an audio glossary, both in English and Spanish. Here's another audio dictionary, very similar to these two. Flashcards if you want to practice. Practice quizzes just for more practice. And then here are some career videos. There's career videos, videos on pretty much all health healthcare um, careers out there. So again, I, I'm my goal was to provide as much material for you to use in order to be successful. And then here again are just the student learning outcomes that we went over at the very beginning. Now just to show you what we're going to be doing, I'm going to change this to my view. It should just take a second. And I'm going to go to content. And so as you can see here are all the chapters. Okay. But they're all hidden from you right now. Okay. I'm going to go to chapter one and just show you what it's going to look like. So here are basically what you're going to learn in this chapter, what you're going to complete, and the materials to use. So in every chapter, it looks very similar. I have PowerPoint slides. Then in this case, I have three recordings for chapter one. Here's chapter one practice. Again, this is just for practice, no grade. You will have unlimited number of attempts. Assignment will never close. There will be 10 questions per attempt. So if you're studying for exam one, you can do these practices over and over again, okay? Now chapter one quiz, complete the 10 questions. It's not timed, you have one attempt, but read the question carefully before answering, okay? With the review, you'll have 10 questions. It's not timed, you'll have one attempt. Again, read the question carefully before answering. Now in this case, some questions will have to be manually regraded. So if you submit it at 10 o'clock on Friday and you made like a 20 and you see Oh, well, that's right, that's right, that's right. Well, I have to go back and regrade it, okay? The computer can only accept so many answers, and so it's just easier for me to go back and regrade it. So every day I will send, every day or two, I will send an email saying I'm updated with grading, then go back to see if I've regraded those questions, and if not, and if you think I missed something, please let me know, okay? I make mistakes. I am not perfect, so please let me know if you think I missed something. Then... You have that symbols quiz. So here is the file that you need to access first. And then here is the actual symbols quiz. And so there's 10 questions and your answers are going to, once you open this, your answers are typed here. And then here's just a little, um, what they call medical millionaire game. Like who wants to be a millionaire? Same concept. I've included that in every single chapter as well. So this is just for chapter one though. I'm going to skip down to, I'm just going to pick chapter seven and show you the similarities and differences. So again, here's what you're going to learn, what you're going to complete, materials to use. Here are your slides again. Here are my recordings again, the practice, the quiz, the review. Now starting with chapter 
before I believe we start spelling and pronouncing terms okay so you see here spelling terms you will correctly spell the 10 terms from chapter 7 so basically once you open this you'll click the play button and I've recorded and it's not actually my voice but I've recorded 10 medical terms from each chapter specifically it's going to pronounce it twice and you can always replay it if you need to but then you will spell that term once you save that question you cannot go back to that previous question okay now there's also a pronunciation list so you will open up this pronunciation list and then you will record yourself pronouncing 10 medical terms as well and you'll upload it to this Dropbox. Also starting with I believe chapter 4 we have case studies. Here's a case study file, it's a scenario, you know a medical scenario and then you're answering five questions about that case study and again I do have to regrade some of those questions manually. And then here's that Medical Millionaire game for Chapter 7. Now it's also a Tournament of Terminology game and an A&P booster. So these are um, all three of these included starting with Chapter 4 and, and going on through Chapter 16. I know this recording was long. I apologize. I just want to show you how many resources there are for you to be successful. But again, you have to use them. I cannot make you do these practice assignments because I know they're worth nothing but I know they are worth they're priceless basically because I'm trying to help you be successful on your exams again if you have any questions please let me know I am here to help email is by far the best way to get in touch with me um, but again I'm here for you to be successful have a great summer